Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us here again. And as we create and we learn uh, to create better, help us to understand your, your principles, your ways, your design, uh, because that's really where it's at, uh, where we find the best is by following you and looking at what you do and studying you. And so help us to notice things uh, that matter and um, in every aspect. Um, not just nature, but everything. And then that uh, in the same way, we can uh, express truth. Truth of beauty, truth of ugliness, all of those sort of things. And so that every, everything we ever create is totally in line with you. All in your name, Jesus, and for your glory. Amen. Okay, so um, let's get going on this little uh, badger here. Okay, so hopefully it's switched over to him. And I got him up. I did not get my colors prepared here, so I've got the little mask there. Unfortunately, maybe I can share my screen quick a minute for just to show. There he is, showed a little guy. Let's shrink that down. So here's the little guy over here. Uh, I've got his, I uh, just painted a little mask. The one side, because it's picking up light, is much lighter. And so I cooled it off to keep it unified. I did the other side exactly the same, but I will glaze a darker color over top. Uh, this would have been a perfect example, the highlights on the eyes, to have used a masking, which I did not do because it's <laughs> I was not prepared so my bad probably would have been really good for me to have put masking in around here just to ensure these nice bright crisp highlights on his face so I'm just gonna have to really be careful to work around that and to leave those there um, okay so we're gonna be moving on into this area as I said I'm gonna not put in the details of these individual bits of fur, because that's not what I want to uh, bring out, but I'm going to try and capture still the softness. So I'm gonna be working with the technique of really building them up uh, slowly, uh, doing uh, what we can. All right, so get my colors prepared here um, to be able to see them. So I'm going to be, now yeah, I'll need my Payne's gray color. I'll need that one. And I had that really nice soft pink here before. And I was working with those light blues. Too bad it's so long. Sometimes I forget what color I was working with last time. But I do want to get my colors prepared ahead of time as much as possible. Uh, you don't want to be mixing up colors while paint is drying on your paper, especially if you have to do some wet on wet. So. I don't know if I can angle my angle my screen better here so you can see what it is I'm doing as I'm preparing my palette. Uh, I'm not going to probably use the blue straight from here. I'm probably just going to stick with my much lighter because I don't my lighter blues. I don't want to overpower it. Um, there's a little bit of a reddish tint there, so I'll use that. One this is where I should be better at knowing the names of my colors. I always forget what they are. But um, I want to capture some more, so I just want to be ready. I may not use the orange, but I just put a little bit into my orange just in case. It doesn't hurt if I get it ready and end up not using it. I'd, just, I'd much rather be prepared ahead of time um, than afterwards. I'm going to want some of these light. Uh, gray, so I'm going to also prepare a few smears of color. Okay, so with my large brush, I'm going to just get these all mixed up. So get a nice smear, a very watered down, very transparent Payne's Gray for those little tiny bits that I might need to add. So I get that prepared ahead of time. 
And then of course, get the darker, Let's get that ready to go. I need to get a test sheet here. This is a good time to also test my colors. So let me grab a test sheet. Okay, so that's, yeah, that's a nice mixture for the Payne's Gray. Squeeze out my excess. Let's see what else do I have? Raw sienna, get that ready to go. And I'm just going to stop my recording here a second because you don't need to be listening to all that. So I'm going to... Okay, so I've got my colors all mixed up and I've got my very watered down light colors prepared. Uh, the bolder ones mixed right in the little um, pans all ready to go. So my larger areas and then my cool colors, my warm colors, and my neutrals. And that's the way I'm going to approach this. So I painted in uh, just the, the mask using the blues, just little hints of the warm in there. I'll see if I can show that a little bit closer. Um, again, so we can see just such subtle hints Everything very neutralized. I don't want this bright, but I do want that feeling of the warmth and the cool, okay? So rather than gray, and a lot of times we think gray, so we grab our black and we mix white and we make gray and we work with black and gray. And personally, in my opinion, it, it kills a painting. I really try to work with neutral colors instead. Um, then you get a a variety of, of grays and um, and even you can get all the way to almost black if you're just working with your dark colors and mixing and uh, thinking warm and cool rather than um, just yeah black so that's pretty much taking uh, advice from the impressionists to uh, to work with with colors and how you you keep the vibrancy, you capture atmosphere, all those sort of things. So, all right, so I'm going to move on with him, and I'm going to probably uh, lay in on the left side here some shadow shape, and it has a little bit of warmth to it. Um, quite a neutralized. But I, I want to keep it, keep this guy unified. So I'm actually going to try and use the same colors that I used in his mask over here on the side. But of course, this is going to need to be much, uh, much softer or uh, much lighter, much higher value because this is just to be a shadowed side on the face. So I'm, because I'm not painting individual, so I can see that's already getting pretty dark. So I'm going to right away drop some water in there right away. And I'm going to spread this out. So I've got plenty of water in there. I don't have to worry about that drying too fast. And I, it's too dark, but I'm not going to panic because I know that I can easily lift that back out, which is going to lighten it up. So I'm using this zigzaggy, jagged sort of shape because that's how I'm going to capture the feel and the expression of the soft of the fur. So I'm not going to just um, soften that out. And you can already see as I've pulled that away, it's actually created, it's, it's already lightened it up. And okay, so I dry my brush and I can remove some of that. And I can put in a, I'm going to warm that up just a bit. There you go, with that little bit of pink in there. So that's now gonna reflect and keep everything unified here with the other colors that I'm using, okay? So I've created this shape. Let me see, can we get it? Uh, that makes it go look really dark, there we go. Okay, so I've created the shape of a shadow. It's not exactly um, what I my photo looks like, but that's okay. My photo is only there as a guide, 
Okay. I'm going to bring some of that soft shadow into the other part of his nose, a little snout there. And I've got a little bit left on my brush that's really nice and pale. So I'm going to start just putting a little bit of texture up on the shadowed side. I'm going to cool it down just a little bit with a little of the Payne's Gray. And again, staying to the left side, I'm going to probably exaggerate the highlight on the right hand side and keep that as pure white as possible. Now I see the camera is making that look quite dark, but of course you can see as I move it into the light, you can get a better idea of how light that is. So, um, yeah, so it's really nice and pale. I'm kind of happy how that turned out. Feels unified with the rest of it because I'm repeating my colors and I'm starting to bring out the form and the softness without having to paint any sort of uh, specific individual hairs on him. Okay, so he has a big, light, brownish, gray, warm sort of color over here. And, um, and then there's layers and it gets darker. So I'm gonna now attempt this. I'm gonna switch to a bigger brush because I have a much bigger area to do. Pick the brush I want. Okay, so I'm gonna switch, as you can see, to a larger one, a bigger area. And I'm going to, again, repeat the same colors. Even though if I were to look at him, I would see that as a, it's a different color on his back than it is on his face, very different in reality, but it's more important to me that he feels unified. Uh, so I wanna repeat those colors. And so I'm gonna actually use the same Payne's Gray and I'm gonna lay that in there so I really spread out and get those colors included all over, all over the whole thing. Um, and I just find that there has to be similarities throughout. That keeps the whole piece, um, yeah, it keeps it unified. So wherever I can see that, I can lay it in because I'm laying it in so pale, it's not gonna matter. By the end, we may be hardly noticeable to the conscious eye. All right, so I'm gonna use that same sort of zigzaggy sort of shape. Dip into my water to soften that down. Now I gotta be dipping in very quickly. This is drying really fast on me. So and I'm really gonna get that paper wet and really spread that out, get that pale. But paying attention to the edge of my shape to keep it feeling interesting. So you can see I'm just dipping straight into the water. And sometimes dipping into the Payne's Gray, but it's now nice and wet. Because I've got my paper nice and wet, I don't have to panic about um, my brush strokes, brush strokes showing. Okay, so in that tiny little shape, I dipped in, I wasn't counting, but maybe five or six times, um, I dipped into that. Okay, and I'm gonna bring a bit of that warm pink, that rose color in again, just to repeat. Okay, very subtle, very light. Oop, that got a bit bold. So I take, dry my brush, take a little bit of that out there, but that's right. And I wanna soften this edge here a little bit. So now I'm just dipping straight water into here. And just let some things happen. So on the camera, let's see if I can change the angle. It's looking, it's just shiny. So it's looking really dark, but it's actually not, in reality, it's not near that dark, um, okay? And we don't wanna judge this by saying, oh no, that doesn't look like anything like it because we're nowhere near 
the finished product. And that's what that only comes from experience, from being able to look at something, know that it doesn't look like the finished product, but know it's just merely a first step. We're only partway there. And I have in mind what I want to be doing. I'm going to just keep layering uh, shapes of color like this over top of each other. Um, I know I have a much darker here and uh, another grayer area here. And, and my shapes are going to keep overlapping each other randomly well it's going to look random but really it's not i'm thinking um every shape i put down i'm thinking of the placement but i'm not controlling it too much because i want it to have a loose sort of feel to it okay so i am to do the dark areas he's very dark under here um but it's he has a nice cool blue it's almost a purplish highlight right through here and so I'm not gonna go with the full dark color, just like I didn't on the mask. I'm not going to do that here either. Um, I'm gonna layer that in, that will come. Don't, we always wanna to try to not jump too soon to, to the final step. Don't, don't skip the steps in between. You get much, uh, sorry, got a little hair in there. All right, so same sort of color. I'm gonna just move over to see my veins gray and mixing it up here. This is a little bit paler. I'm gonna add just a little bit, darken, darken it up here. Okay. And this time I'll be bringing in some more blue as well, I think. All right. So this is a little bit darker. I don't want to go to the full dark now. It might leak into my other shape just a little bit. Yeah, I can see that happening, but I don't mind that actually. I'm okay with that. Okay, I gotta stay ahead of this. I, so this is where my, my edge is. And I've got to not let that start to dry. Refer to my photo here to see what sort of shape does this want to take on. So I'm actually, I'm going to purposely soften that out. So I'm going to run some of that up into there. So that's a, a bit of a soft blend. I don't mind these little white areas showing up. I'm going to soften this edge a little bit. And then I'm going to bring in some blue. I'm going to also do some lifting with my tissue here. It's a bit on the darker side than a, the darker than I like. Okay, good, yep. So I can tone that down a little bit. I have to fix the shape around the mouth here too. Okay, so that edge is important. So this is where I get a little bit more careful with my detail. Let that get a little bit darker. And right away bring in my blue. Ooh, that is bold, a lot bolder than I wanted. So let's just water it way down. Soften that out. Okay, so that's much cooler. Soften up the edge by going over with a clean brush. Soften that edge up and kind of pull that paint away a little bit. And let's go back in and lift some of that back out of there again. Okay. So that is the shadowed side. So textures being created. Something's up with my paper because I'm working on just sort of my scrappy bits of paper here. I have to save a little bit. Um, I want this to dry now. While this is drying, I see this part here is fairly dry. So I can now start layering some other sort of shapes on his back as well. And I'm gonna continue with my Payne's Gray. I might be this time bringing in a little bit of my other browns here.
Okay, I'm gonna want this very watery, very wet, very soft. Spread this out, you can always go darker. And that just happened, I got much darker there. Okay, that's getting too bold. Let's soften that edge out. Pull this up and switch to a different brush. So again, for me, I believe in not trying to necessarily finish something right away. Work in layers, work in steps, take your time. And I believe that in really in all sorts of painting. Okay, I'm gonna soften this out. Let that be. Let my colors run together. Let the water do its own thing. And this gets a little bit darker back here. So let's go ahead and layer some darker in here. Now, I don't want my brush stroke to show, although here I'm getting a wonderful little bit of um, dry brush happening. What I was going to say is, even though I don't want my brush stroke to show, the direction of my brush will create the outline of my shape, and that is important, especially if I'm trying to create a sense of fur. I should have a shape that's very pointy on the ends, and which end is pointy will help show the direction of the fur, okay? So you can see the shadow from the light that's buckled here. So I was talking with you guys earlier about that, the buckling paper. And so that has happened here. My paper is buckled, it's very wet. And really, I, before I can put my next layers of color in here, I should um, really let that dry. Okay, so there's more details in the feet that I'm not going to do right now. What I will do is go ahead and this area is all nice and dry. Get some more of the mask, his little mask painted in. And so now I have to consciously think, how do I want to go? Do I want to get a little more interest and exaggeration? Um, in here, my temptation is always, and I think we all deal with, especially when we're learning, our temptation is to oh, try and make it look like the photograph. And then the temptation is just grab a dark paints gray and start painting that in black. So it looks like his little black mask. But if all I'm doing, once again, I always say, if all I'm doing is trying to make it look like a photograph, then just hang up, hang up the photo and say, um, this is really about trying to um, create just aesthetic appeal, I guess is one way to say it, uh, of color, shapes of color working together in harmony in a way that it will attract the viewer in a way that the photo is not able to, because the photograph is sort of limited to, to reality. Of course, unless, you know, you, a photographer plays around with their photo and they do all sorts of editing as well. So I feel like just, I guess, to encourage you guys to be bold. So an encouragement you, to you to be bold, I'm going to go bold as well. And we'll see where this ends up taking us. So I'm going to, I'm going to stay away from the paints gray. I'm going to do the darker side of the mask. And I'm just going to go in with the blue. And we're going to put a layer of blue in here. And I'm not going to worry. I'm going to stop myself from worrying about it getting too blue. Because I think this could be kind of fun. If I just, if I'm going to tell you guys to trust yourself and to go for it, then I need to be doing the same myself. So we're going to lay in this blue. 
on the shadow side. So now I, I don't want to cover up my color underneath completely. I want some of that to show through as well. So I'm going to create a shape here. And as I'm laying this in, laying in my darker blue, getting this side of the mask darker than the other side, just using blue. Blue because it's cool. Um, let's go ahead and even lay in right into the eye itself. Okay, so there's another layer. It's darkening it up right now. To keep it unified, to keep these masks or both of these little stripes feeling like they're the same, I want to repeat some of that color on this side. And I need to get, so we'll go ahead and do his eye on this side as well. Get that shape in there. Now that's not the exact same shape I'm seeing there. There's a bit of highlight here, or sorry, not a highlight, but a shadow there. Now, when I paint this, again, what should be in your mind is not eye. This is his eye, and I'm going to try and make this look like his eye. I don't actually think about this as an eye. I'm thinking about this just as a shape of darker color. And I want to capture the essence at the very least, the essence of that shape. So that it will take take on so just a little bit on the left side because that's the shadowed side. A little bit in here. Yeah, I think that'll be all right. Let's lighten that up just a little bit there by lifting it out a little bit. Let's get a little bit of that blue in the bottom part of his nose as well. On the shadowed side of his nose. And I can continue on a little bit in the ear. So again, I'm painting by color, thinking about where to put some color in. And Okay, so you can see over here, my color is actually running. It's softening out, but I kind of like that. I don't mind. I wasn't quite prepared that that was going to happen. I thought it was drier, but we'll call that a happy accident because that's going to keep that soft. This is probably wet down here, but I do know that this is a darker area right under his chin. So, no, that's not running on that case here where I thought it was going to run. It's not. Okay, so, but I'm going to put in another layer of this blue under here. Not the whole way down. And we'll let that be. And it looks like this whole area is dry already. So I'm just going to continue on with my blue. And again, let me just show you, because even though I've talked to you guys about don't work with smears. And again, when I lay down a rule, or not a rule, don't even think of anything that I say when I tell you how to do something. Don't think of it as a rule that you have to abide blindly. It's a guideline. It's something to understand and to know. Uh, because in this case, of course, this I would call this a smear. But I'm working with the smear because I'm working in smaller areas and I'm working with transparent layers, layering them over top of each other. Okay, so even though this blue color I'm using is not real, okay, that's not very dark at all. It's, it's pale, it's quite pale, but because I'm layering it, it's coming out much bolder and richer in color and in deeper in value, a much lower value than, um, than it would just on its own, okay? So I'm gonna, it's really, as that front leg tucks in behind that back leg, it gets darker there, so, and cooler, so I'm gonna cool that off. I'm gonna carry that up, I think. 
Rick, when you say don't work with smears, what do you mean? <laughs> Maybe that was the first one. Uh, too often when, just when we, it, you know how I always tell you to prepare a nice big uh, puddle of paint ready to go. Right. And that's what I'm talking about. So um, let me just show you my palette. I just have to, I think that's finished. That's going to hold enough. Okay, so on my palette, again, um, I've often when we're first learning, we are content to just work with, uh, we, we mix up paint. Um, well, actually, often we don't mix up the paint. We just dab in as we go. We don't prepare any of our colors uh, before we begin. And then we end up just, we dip our brush into the water and then we start kind of scrubbing at it. And, and, then, and then we lay it in and we end up with, every, all of our colors are very watery and pale. And that's very common when we're first learning is all of our colors are very watery and pale. And, um, and then while it's drying, we keep going back to it because it's, you know, if we do try and darken, darken it, a student doesn't, often doesn't wait when we're, or, uh, when we're learning. We don't wait for it to dry to, and we just keep adding more and more, and we end up overworking it instead of having a nice, bold, rich puddle of paint like this one, like my paint's gray, or my, what is that one, my umber here, um, or my raw sand. Okay, so like this right now, I, I've got a nice puddle in there. My orange, I, I don't know if I'm gonna end up using it at all, but I've got a nice puddle of rich, bold paint there and I've got plenty in I've got enough in there okay um, this smear of this pink color would not go very far okay, okay. and my smear of blue. small quantities of paint say it again so a smear is a small quali quantity of paint yeah okay. well it's, it's a very it's usually very watery because it's just you're just taking it off of the somewhere on your palette and you're just dipping in water and you end up adding you end up because there's very little pigment there um, and then you add water to it uh, then then you end up with the smear and so the problem is just when we're learning um, we end up with almost only working with smears uh, so there's nothing wrong with the smear you just have to understand when is it time to use it you know okay. um, and that's I believe that's in anything with art like you hear so many so many artists like to make these bold statements as if this is a universal truth that you are never allowed to step away from. And if you do, it means you're not as good an artist. Like one of the things I always hear about is never use an eraser. Um, and uh, um, it just, you know, so that's one. Or never put their focal point in the middle of your painting. Or, um, never you must color outside of the lines you know these across the board statements and if you ever color in lines if you ever put your focal point in the center if you ever use an eraser clearly you're not a good artist well that's that's an overstatement you have to know when is it time when do you put it in the center and when do you not when are you working in a style that requires you to stay inside the lines and when do you break out when do you go, you know, let it happen? And that's, that to me is the art of understanding. That's an art is understanding uh, when, you know, when you do and when you don't. Okay. So kind of same thing. Understand when do I work with bold, rich, vibrant paint? And when do I work with pale? Subtlety is just as important as bold contrast, you know. And, and that's what you're learning. And you, and you just discover that on your own as you're going along without even thinking, you know, from experience, you'll do this and you're like, oh, wow, that worked. You may not even consciously think it, it may just be in the back of your mind, your brain, the, the brain that is always deciding what it likes and what it doesn't like, the, I guess the part of you that's taste, um, is remembering and recording all of those things. Um, and that's why as an artist, you want to stay active because you will forget, you know, those memories go, they get buried. Um, and you just remember, oh, wow, that really worked. I like that. So that's when I'm going to do that. Okay. Um, trust me, when I was in college, there was, and I was painting, I was just working with the color and you mix white to lighten it and you mix black to dark, make it darker. 
and you learn how to blend and if you can blend you know that i was this was acrylic in oil painting you know um and uh, my teachers were always telling me loosen up loosen up and it, it was true i needed to um and uh, i was just you know having to figure that out but and then i loosened up and everything just became and then became a mess and i had to learn okay when is it time to tighten up when is it time to loosen up okay so that's a long answer <laughs> to the question here how are we doing it's, it's almost nine o'clock so um let me see if i can get this little guy he's dry enough that i can tilt him in a way that we can see him with good lighting and get a um, tilt my camera here to see what's starting to happen. Move that out of the way. Okay. So, all right. So we can see what's starting to to happen with him. I'm getting. Uh, I am getting my darks and my lights established. That's very important. Okay. But I'm building up. My darks are not actually as dark as they could go. All right. Especially if I look over at my photo. The photo that I'm working from, the darks are much darker, okay? Uh, they're not near that blue, but I really want, I, I like this idea of establishing my um, my darks, or sorry, my cool and my warm, okay? Um, so I've got hard edge shapes happening here. I have some fun hard edge shapes over here that softly blend into soft areas. So I've got areas of soft, color gradations happening um, like here okay it's soft and then it moves into a darker area and all of this is happening and then i will be layering other shapes of color over top of this but i really need for this to dry before i can continue on with him so all right that actually um is where i can leave that at for now and um what i'm going to do is uh, switch over to talk to you guys if you in these last few minutes. If you guys have anything of your own questions about your own piece or anything you want to share, uh, then I can uh, look at that. Here we go. Then I can look at those as well. All right. Um, here's our gallery view. Uh, I think I'll probably just stop recording it here. Um, if that's all right.